Hey, I'm firearms attorney Gilbert Ambler, and today we're back to talk about a conviction that the ATF just got along with the Department of Justice for possession of a solvent trap kit that had not yet been drilled out. And I want to highlight that point. This was not something that was a functional device as a silencer. This was a kit that had not been drilled out that would have still been functional at catching solvent. So how did the ATF get a conviction on this? Why does this conviction matter to us? How will they use this conviction against us in the future? Let's dive into it. But before we do, if you have not yet hit that subscribe button, go ahead and hit subscribe for us. Like this, comment, share this. That way you and your friends can keep getting this pro Second Amendment related content. All right. The case we're talking about comes from the Eastern District of Virginia, and it was an indictment and in fact a conviction for an individual named Mr. Speed. Now, Mr. Speed was a Navy veteran who was in trouble separately and apart from his charges for possession of an unregistered silencer for something that took place inside the Capitol building or is alleged to have taken place inside the Capitol building on January 6th. So perhaps that's what drew the ATF's attention to Mr. Speed. But the ATF alleges that in 2020 and 2021, and really ramping up through 2021, Mr. Speed was engaged in stockpiling weapons, which, I mean, they like to use that term to make sound pe people sound bad, but there's a fine line between collecting and stockpiling. Nonetheless, he spent an awful lot of money in 2021. ATF alleges that he spent $40,000 on firearms in 2021. This, of course, is not illegal. But in the course of his buying all of these firearms, he got in touch with an ATF confidential informant. And when he talked to that confidential informant, he talked about buying solvent trap kits and he indicated to the agent that he understood that these were kits that could be used to, sol to silence or muffle a firearm. Now this language is important because when we look at the definition of a silencer, and these things were clearly not functional yet as silencers because they hadn't been drilled out. So they would not in their current format meet the definition of a silencer as a functional silencer, but there's a subpart of the definition of silencer that ATF would have been using here. And that subpart is found in 18 USC 921A25, and it defines a silencer as a device to silence or muffle a firearm or any piece or part of that device designed solely or only for use in a device to muffle or silence a firearm. So here, that's what we're talking about. We are talking about a part or a piece that is designed only for use. It's not yet functional in and of itself, but it, the ATF is alleging that it is designed only for use in muffling a firearm. So why is it relevant that Mr. Speed said that he understood that they could be used to silence a firearm? Well, because we're not worried about how something could be used, we're worried about whether this is the only way, if that's the only thing it would be used for. And of course, I don't necessarily think that that is true in this scenario. So how did the ATF actually get a conviction in this case? Well, I think they made Mr. Speed look as unlikable as possible. Because as I understand it, the jury heard testimony about other comments that Mr. Speed was making, including his admiration for people like Hitler and the Unabomber. And of course, when a jury starts hearing all of these terrible things and they start hearing somebody was telling the confidential informant that they wanted to wipe out the race of the Jewish people on this planet, that's the type of thing that's gonna start to sway a jury. And so when the ATF is making the, making the case that these parts or these pieces meet the definition of a part or a piece designed, it, designed and intended only for use in making a silencer, if the jury really hates somebody, they might buy that argument, and it appears that they did here. But I'm still concerned about this conviction, and I'm concerned about this for several reasons. A, when ATF sent all of those letters to diversified machine clients, we were a little dubious. We understood the ATF's position. I told people all the time that were calling my office concerned about those letters. Yes, you should be concerned because the ATF is giving you a warning that they will prosecute you. Whether they could convict you is a different story. And here it appears that at least in some scenarios, the ATF might be able to get a conviction. And we know that once the ATF has one conviction under their belt, they will leverage that in future court actions. And here's what I mean by this. In the current pistol brace rule that we are fighting, the ATF has pointed to a couple of past convictions that they have gotten for people that possessed short barreled rifles or short barreled shotguns 
and they are arguing that on four occasions is what I believe they cited. Four occasions when they got convictions for people possessing short barreled rifles or short barreled shotguns. They're arguing to the court now that that shows that these items are, have, that the courts have held that these items are not in common use, that they are dangerous and unusual. So what they're essentially do, doing is they are building their own precedent, which they could later turn to down the road. Why is this concerning for gun owners? Well, we've got to start imagining what else the ATF might come after. I mean, we saw this recently with the auto key card case. That was another conviction that I didn't necessarily think that the ATF would get. And of course, this is, this is a moment to talk about just how good the lawyers for the ATF are, because obviously they have some excellent lawyers on their side. But, and if, if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about with the auto key card, it's, it's the lightning link case. Essentially, the ATF got a conviction for a gentleman named Matthew Hoover, who had been etching out the part that would turn a semi-automatic firearm into a fully automatic firearm. He etched it out on metal, but did not cut it out simply etched out the, the outline of it and was selling it as a novelty item. And the ATF pursued him, indicted him, and actually got a conviction for the unlawful transfer of machine guns, arguing that that piece that was not yet cut out was in fact a piece designed and intended to convert a semi-automatic weapon into a fully automatic weapon. So now we've got to worry, what types of things could you misuse in a way that the ATF would say that could be misused in a criminal way and therefore it is a crime even if it's not currently being used in a criminal way. Do you understand what I'm saying? For example, we have opinions from the ATF. There are opinions out there that say metal water bottles are silencers, okay? Because a metal water bottle, if it's wrapped with duct tape, wrapped around the muzzle of a firearm, could muffle or silence a firearm bring down the decibel rating of the firearm, and therefore the ATF thinks that is a silencer, at least in the one opinion letter that we know of. You've got to worry, because if the ATF decides they're going to come after you, they could find virtually any piece that would affix to the muzzle of your firearm in your collection. We're talking about things like flash hiders, right? If a flash hider could be modified to bring down the decibel rating of a firearm, now we're worried that the ATF would argue that if it's misused, they might believe that it's an item designed and intended only for use in bringing down the decibel level, silencing or muffling a firearm. So what we're starting to do is we're starting to look at things that had either lawful uses, remember catching solvent or illegal uses, and we're seeing the ATF get convictions arguing successfully to a jury that the jury should assume that the only way it's gonna be used is that criminal use. Very, very concerning something we should keep an eye on. If you enjoyed this content, go ahead, like, share, comment. Until next time.